Hi, you just uh, learned about the many facets of human resource management in the chapter that accompanies this video. One of the areas that we least like to discuss, but often has to be dealt with, is the issue of forced separation, or more commonly termed firing. I hope none of you have ever been fired, but as managers in training or owners, you're probably going to have to, at some point in time, face the challenge or the situation of having to deal with an employee that must be separated from the firm. And so how you deal with this is as crucial as actually making the decision to fire someone. Because I'm sure you've heard about lawsuits, issues, violence that has occurred because of a firing situation going wrong. And so the book does discuss to some regard you know, how you should go about firing, but I'm gonna give you some tips, if you will, I hate to call them tips, but some important information that can help you in terms of dealing with what is a very disturbing and very what can be very uh, dramatic uh, intervention or interaction. So here are some things to note, th some things can be useful. And then these can also, by the way, apply to, to non-firing type situations. I, I use these many times, these kinds of tips, uh, many times when I'm dealing with just uh, student uh, feedback, ensuring that I'm giving students good constructive feedback and I'm giving them in a professional formal matter. Uh, it can be used in your parenting life, in dealing with colleagues, whatever it is. So these are good tips, obviously, that can be used in, in, in an in a employment uh, separation type uh, situation, but also in other areas of life. So probably most importantly is to have documentation. It is not sufficient or it's not uh, enough for you to simply say, oh, you know, this person has always done this. or this person has had a history of doing this, for example, being late or using profanity or, or um, making sexual advances. It is important for you to, where possible, provide and, I'm, sh I'm sorry, find and provide documentation of this, this behavior. So if the person has been late for work, do you have check-in times? Do you have clock cards that can verify that, that excuse me, this person actually has a background or has a history of, of, of being late, of lateness, okay? absenteeism, those kinds of sexual, sexual advances. Uh, we documented the cases so that when we are going to fire somebody, when we made that decision, we have some type of objective data, some type of profile or file in place that can again be used as justification for the decision. Secondly, before you fire anybody, you really want to sit with that person. Again, if possible, if the situation uh, allows, excuse me, allows it, you want to sit with that person and have that type of meeting. You know, I often try to do this before I have to fail a student. I, say, you know, I bring them in and I say, listen, hey, this is what's going on. Here is the evidence. Here's what. We, here's the history. Here's the pattern. How can we? figure this out in such a way that will keep you in this class, or in the case of an, of an organization, keep you there in your job. How can we fit? Can we give you help? Can I give you assistance? What can be done? Or simply, it could just be about, you know, using the, the, the common term, reading the riot act. You haven't been doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know, you're very, very close to being terminated. We need you to change certain behavior patterns. We need you to do certain things differently. That type of meeting can oftentimes help to, to uh, resolve the situation or eliminate the need for separation because the person kind of gets the message, they realize the importance, the significance of this moment, of what the consequences that can occur if they don't actually change certain things. And that can, in some instances, help. Okay, so having that meeting, that prior meeting saying, listen, this is something that, that necessarily needs to be done. Thirdly, and again, this is, is dependent upon the situation, upon who's doing uh, the firing, who's doing the, the review fee, is to really kind of have somebody with you, if, if, if possible. Now, that has become important uh, in many instances because of, of the 
the possibility of, of violence or, or somebody you know reacting to this to this negative uh, information in in a pretty uh, violent and detrimental way for the person who's communicating this information so you might want to have somebody there you also the benefit of having somebody there with you is that again there is some type of accountability somebody might say well, oh listen I went into there and, and they told me that the reason they fired, they were firing me be, was because of my color, it was called my skin, or it was because of my gender, or because they had this personal vendetta against my, my cousin, right? If you have somebody there, again, there's almost like a witness that can account and say, hey, wait, no, no, no. Everything was kind of laid out on the table. This person was, was shown their file and those kind of, everything was above board. So that accountability, you know, where possible, I don't bring in other professors. You know when I'm I'm giving certain feedback to, to 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 students because again I have that that documentation and I have kind of a running communication uh, with, with with those of my superiors. But if again you are in that situation and you can bring somebody in, it's probably advisable to do that. And then lastly is you know just kind of be prepared for anything. Be prepared that this person may react violently to some regard, or be prepared that that the person you know might break down. There's certain things that can occur. We're dealing with humans. We're dealing with it's a very emotionally charged situation many times. You know, even though the person might kind of know that the firing is coming, to actually sit down and get that news, it hurts. It hurts personally. Again, although it might be justified, it doesn't matter. So you have to be prepared. But doing all these things, making sure that you're trying to base it on objectivity, building a relationship with the with the person through having meetings and having an important meeting before you actually make that decision. You know, having somebody there as well. All those things kind of help to define Fuse what can be a very volatile situation. So it's important for you to understand this, and it's important for you to recognize that while separation, while having to, to separate somebody from from the organization, having to fire somebody, is a difficult and challenging prospect. Many times, it is often a necessary uh, decision. And again, you kind of have to look at it from the. You know, I know it sounds cliche. It might even it might even sound untrue, but but oftentimes, you know. Firing can be beneficial not only for the organization but also for the person who's getting fired. And you say, well, how, how is that even possible? Well, if you're not really supposed to be in that job, you're not creating any value in that job, it's actually not the best fit for you, then finding the best fit can be useful. You know, you'll hear this in terms of NBA coaches. They'll be like, hey, that's the nature of the business. I don't produce, I get fired. They go on to different jobs. Now, it isn't the case for every single kind of employee. You know, you get fired, that goes in your resume. That probably is a, a is more of a black mark than say for an NBA coach, but some of the same um, lessons can be learned. And again, finding that better fit, finding a place that you can create value, is the opportunity created by being terminated from an from an old assignment. Okay, so hope these were helpful. Hope you could actually use these in practice. Don't go out there and just try firing everybody. But if the situation arises, obviously you have some tips to help you.